let's have a look at risks versus rates in modeling. These can quite often get confused by beginners, so it's a good idea to take a look at them and make sure you really understand the difference between them. Let's start off with risks. Risks are usually expressed as probabilities, from 0 to 1 or from 0% to 100%. What's key with a risk is that a time period is specified and built into it. For example, what is the risk of dying in the next year? It can be calculated as the number of events within a specific time period divided by the people at risk. Rates are a little bit different. They are the instantaneous hazard of an event happening, but they're often expressed as a number of events per 100,000 person years. And they can be calculated as the number of events divided by the number of person years at risk. Sometimes one person can have more than one event, but sometimes only one event is possible, particularly if you're looking at something like mortality. Let's take a look at an extreme example to see the difference between risks and rates. We have a cohort of 100,000 people and we follow them up over one calendar year. In this particularly unlucky cohort, the rate of death is 200 per 100,000 person days, i.e. 73,000 per 100,000 person years. Well, let's look at what that would be like. On January the 1st, 200 would die. By the end of January, just over 6,000 would have died. By the end of June, over 30,000 would have died. And by the end of the year, nearly 52,000 people would have died. But notice that that is different from the 73,000 per 100,000 person years. And we'll see why that is. The annual risk of death in this cohort is 51,809 deaths divided by 100,000 people in the cohort. So that's 0 0.51809. The rate of death in this cohort is 51,809 deaths divided by the number of person years that were lived. It's not actually 100,000 person years because lots of people didn't live for the full year. In fact, we can calculate that there were only 70,971 person years lived. And therefore, when we divide the top by the bottom, we get 0.73, which is exactly equal to 73,000 per 100,000. We can convert between risks and rates. If a rate is constant over a period of time for which we have or want a risk, then we can use these formulae to convert between them. If we have a rate and we need a risk, we use this top one. So 1 minus e to the power of rate times time negative thereof. Or if we have a risk and we want to know the rate, we take the natural logarithm of 1 minus the risk we divide it by time, and then we take the negative of that. If rate is constant over a period of time, and you have a risk p over time t, but want to risk p prime over time t prime, you can calculate p prime as shown here. So p prime is equal to 1 minus 1 minus p to the power of t prime over t. Risks and rates can be similar. If the risk is over the same period of time that the rate is defined, typically one year, and they are small, then you will have that risk is equal to 1 minus e to the minus the rate. If we expand the Taylor series of this, we get 1 minus the rate plus the rate squared over 2 minus the rate cubed over 6 plus dot dot dot. If the rate is very small, then all of these higher powered terms are approximately zero, so we just get that the risk is approximately equal to the rate. The mathematics get a little heavy from this point on. You may wish to save the rest of this video for another time. We're going to look at some probability theory now. Risks are, prob are probabilities. In a transition matrix, they come from the conditional survival function. Let's look first at a 
survival function before we come on to what a conditional survival function is. A survival function gives you the probability of surviving to some time t. We denote it as s of t is the probability that the random event t is, happens at a time greater than lowercase t. This is related to the cumulative distribution function capital F of t for the failure or event of interest. So S of t is equal to 1 minus capital F of t. That's because capital F of t is the probability that t is less than or equal to t, the probability that the event happens before or at time t. When we look at the conditional survival function, we're asking what is the probability of surviving to a time t2 given that we already survived to a time t1 that is earlier than t2. When you go through the maths, you'll find that the conditional survival, which we express as shown here, s t2 bar t1, so s surviving to t2 conditional on surviving to t1, is just equal to the survival at t2 divided by the survival at t1. Let's have a look at a survival distribution. This is the Gompertz distribution, which is useful for modeling general mortality. This is its survival function. On the right, we have two different Gompertz, Gompertz distributions. They both have the same median survival, which is 80. In the green, we have one where this A, this shape parameter, is 0 0.01. And in the blue, we have an example where A is 0.1. So you can see these are quite different curves. And this blue one is quite close to a general mortality curve. That's why Gompertz is useful for modeling general mortality. If we were to use that in a Markov cohort simulation, then the transition probability from alive to dead when each cycle is a year of life is the conditional probability of dying before the next birthday. So that's one minus the conditional survival function. And that's shown here for those two Gompertz distributions that we had before. So you'll see that when A is 0.01, that conditional probability of dying before the next birthday doesn't change very much at all over age. Whereas when A is 0.1, then we will see a much greater change over time in the conditional probability of dying before the next birthday. Those were risks, probabilities. Now let's look at how rates fit in. A hazard rate is the instantaneous risk of an event, and you can work it out by looking at the mathematical limit of 1 minus the conditional survival distribution. So it's looking at a time t plus delta t conditional on surviving to time t. So this bit on the top is the probability of dying by the time t plus delta t given that you survived to time t. And then we're dividing that by delta t. And then we take the limit as delta t tends to zero. OK, well, we know that the conditional survival is just given by the survival at the later point divided by the survival at the earlier point. This is not dependent on this, so we can take it outside of the limit sign. However, to take it out of the limit sign, we have to multiply this by st. So that's why on the next line we have st minus st plus delta t. We also know that the survival function is related to the cumulative distribution function, capital F, by s equals 1 minus f. So those 1s will cancel out, and we'll end up with f t plus delta t minus f t. Now this is exactly the formula for the differential 
of capital F. So this hazard function HT is equal to 1 over S of T, the survival function, times the differential of the cumulative distribution function with respect to time. And that is just equal to the probability density function F. So finally, the hazard rate is equal to the probability density function divided by the survival function. The cumulative hazard function is the integral of the hazard function over time. So capital H is equal to the integral from naught to T of little h of tau with respect to tau. And that's related to the survival function by this equation here. So the survival function is equal to e to the power of minus capital H. Here we have some examples of hazard functions. If the hazard is constant over time, then we have an exponential distribution. So the hazard function is simply the constant lambda. If instead we want a polynomial shape to our hazard function, then we will have a Weibull distribution. The hazard function for that is shown here. So when gamma, this parameter here, is greater than 1, we'll have hazard which is increasing over time. Whereas if gamma is less than 1, we'll have hazard which is decreasing over time. If we want to have hazard which grows or shrinks exponentially, then we have a Gompertz distribution. The hazard function for that is shown here. When A is positive, that means that the hazard is growing exponentially. On the other hand, if A is negative, that means that the hazard is shrinking exponentially, and therefore it's possible that you won't have an actual mean for this distribution because it's an incomplete or an improper probability distribution. So there is some probability that it effectively takes a value of infinity.